Hey, good morning. There you are. How is everyone doing this morning? Uh, it looks like a beautiful day here today. Kind of looks like it's maybe a little smoky out yet. So, um, anyway, let me check a couple things here. Uh, okay. Hang on a second. Quiet. Our puppies missed us, so they want a little bit of love. And uh, so he's probably going to make a little bit of noise today. Otherwise, I'll have to put you outside, big guy. Yeah. So anyway, good morning, Sandy. Quit now. Quit, 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 quit. You want to go outside? Hang on. Let me see if I can get him outside. Come on. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Okay, you lay down then. Yeah, you see, Kobe took my chair. Now you see his head here. Yeah, he always likes to take my chair. Get over in your chair, guy. Yeah, they missed us. At least someone missed us, huh? So anyway, we had just had a couple of days up north and in my favorite town ever in Duluth. And oh my goodness. Hey, good morning, Holly. Um, we just had an amazing time. Um, nothing like rip roaring, but um, see, Darren had never been up there before. And it's my favorite town, so I've been up there and I've seen everything, and um, and so we we just went real quickly. I took him through the Glensheen Mansion. I took him through the William A. Irvin. I think it was an it's an iron ore boat that is a museum there now. Uh, we went up to Two Harbors and seen the lighthouse and took a tour to, through the lighthouse. And uh, we went, uh, let's see, what was it, Mon Monday morning, we went on the Vista Fleet uh, boat that goes around um, the harbor and kind of up the North Shore a little bit. And uh, we ate at a couple um, different restaurants. There's a restaurant over in Superior called the Anchor Bar and Grill. It's like a super duper uh, hole in the wall um, dive bar, but not really a dive bar because it's got a lot of antiques and stuff in it. And then um, they get their hamburgers and their potatoes from a local farmer. And so they have, you know, like real, real hamburgers. And then they um, take their potatoes and they cut them and, and then fry them up. And, um, of course, the place is packed every time we go there. My dad brought me there many years ago, and it's been one of my favorites. So uh, we did that. Uh, we spent one night in a um, hotel that was kind of spendy. Don't normally do this, but I wanted to give him the experience of um, sitting on the deck and having coffee because I used to do it all the time when I was a fundraising director. I'd go up there and uh, get a hotel, but they were a lot cheaper because it was in the off season. I could get them for a hundred bucks or less back in the day. This one was not that, but we did get a fair price. And so we sat on the deck and we had um, coffee in the evening and coffee in the morning. And then at about, oh, in between 1230 and 130. Well, actually it was later than that because a ship was supposed to come in at 1034. And then they switched it to midnight and he fell asleep. But I was so excited, I wanted to show him this. So I laid there waiting. And I think the boat came in close to one. So I woke him up and we went and we sat out on the deck and we watched the the ship come in with all of its lights and, and uh, all that stuff. And then on the phone, if you go to the website, it has a webcam right on the canal. And so our hotel was a little away from the the canal and but then we we got to go on the the webcam and then watch it come in to the canal and watch the bridge rise and stuff and and there was a couple more that came in and they were up to a thousand feet long and a hundred and four feet wide um so anyway Duluth is just my place um I never get old of that um and I know some of the other people the people that work there they said they don't get old of it you know, of all of the, the, uh, the lake and everything that goes along with it. So, um, it was just really short and sweet. We crammed a lot in, 
Um, and then we got the phone call and Straw and Fields are calling us. And so um, we got back last night. Darren went out to the farm and left at about 6 o'clock this morning um, to bring the baler and tractor home um, as we're going to be baling up a field this afternoon not too, too far from us. Uh, great big acts of kindness goes out to um, Kevin Hammer for dropping um, his his wheat for our straw. So anyway, I could talk about this forever, but I know that's not what you guys are on for. So let's start with our morning affirmations. And I'm so glad to be back, you know. I was just thinking I didn't get a lot of time to be in the Lord's Word the last couple of days here. Um, but you know what? I got to be in God's world and see his, his beauty. And it is just everywhere. If it's not in your backyard, go find it, my friends. Life is just too short. Um, it's just amazing that the blessings that he has out there, even with everything going on in the world today. So here we go. You all ready? I am important. Today is going to be a great day. And the world needs me. Today I choose happiness. I believe in myself. Today is a fresh start. Today I'm going to do my best. And today and every day, God loves me. And I am his child. Praise the Lord. Absolutely praise the Lord. Um, so for August 18th, which is um, Darren's son, my stepson's birthday, Brock. Happy birthday, Brock. Um, we have from Abraham Lincoln. I can see how it might be possible for a man to look down upon the earth and be an atheist, but I cannot conceive how he could look up into the heavens and say there is no God. Ah, Abe, you hit it on the spot there. Yep, yep, he's a wise one. And for tomorrow, the 19th, it comes from Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Yes, he is. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? All right, so we will uh, move into our prayers. First of all, I see Sandy um, uh, put a prayer request on here. Could you please send prayers to my cousin Randy? as all of his organs are shutting down. And we prayed for Randy uh, last week. So absolutely please pray for Sandy's cousin Randy and all of the family members there. Um, we need big prayers as well for our little friend Lucas that we prayed for last week. Uh, Lucas has ang uh, separation anxiety and today was his first day of school. And his mom texted me this morning and she said he cried all the way to school. Um, Lucas is a little special needs fella who is absolutely amazing, um, full of love, um, and the family is um, second to none. Um, and uh, so please, uh, I told his mom that we are going to pray that Jesus wraps his arms around Lucas and makes him feel safe and secure and gives him peace now at the, the new start of the year. Um, my friend Tammy shared with me um, that um, her, her, uh, her daughter's half-sisters, uh, excuse me, sister, Riley Andreen, um, which is uh, Mike Andreen and Michelle Andreen's daughter, 17 years old, um, died in a car accident. Oof, I went to school with both Mike and, and Tammy. I know them well. And uh, boy, that that's tough. I don't know the details on that, but please keep uh, Tammy and the Andreen family in your prayers. Sarah shared with us uh, that she requests prayers for little Grace, who is a newborn. Uh, she's about five days old now, who was born with COVID. Oh my goodness, I don't know how that works, but the little body, I can't imagine fighting off something like that. So please uh, send out prayers for little Grace and, and the family. Um, my friend Laura um, shared with us that she lost her sister. 
And so uh, prayers go out for Laura and the rest of her family. Um, my friend Lisa from back home uh, shared that her brother-in-law needs prayers as he was in a motorcycle accident. I haven't gotten an update on that, um, but of course we'll send prayers out there, that way. Um, Guy Hefta, um, I texted Karen last night as I was thinking about her, and and um, I have it on my phone I want to share with you. She says that he, uh, Guy is doing pretty well. He has doctor's appointments next Monday. Of course, he has aches and discomfort off and on um, in the left leg, ankle, and foot. Um, so good thing for pain pills, she said. <laughs> uh, but he's getting stronger with his arms, of course, from using his walker. And Guy is a trooper, and he's so blessed because his wife is a very, very good nurse. If you remember, uh, Karen helped me through my surgeries. Um, and uh, I told her, I said, uh, when this is over, he's going to look like He-Man, you know, a bodybuilder. His arms are building up. So, um but anyway, keep Guy in your prayers. Um, and then um, I got an update from Sandy Dravisky. Uh, we prayed for uh, little Harper last week, her granddaughter that had pneumonia. Um, but she says Harper is doing great. And then if you remember, we were praying for her husband, Mark Dravisky, who has just had a long struggle with cancer. Um, um, it says... Um, Mark, on the other hand, has had a couple of rough days. Fatigue, back pain, and stomach distress. Um, she's asking for continued prayers um, for him. Um, he's going through treatments, as we know. Um, she kind of feels like uh, uh, the back pain is getting a little bit better, and so his treatments are, are hopefully zapping out this new cancer activity. So... Um, you know what? Miracles are everywhere. Keep those prayers coming for, for Mark. And um, let's see, Lisa. Oh, we need big prayers going out, you guys, for our country. Um, I don't like doing this, but my husband will sometimes put uh, the Fox um, or the new whatever. I don't even know what it is, but the news channel on there. We listened to it on our way home yesterday. And uh, I don't know. It just sounds bad. So we need prayers, strong prayers going out for our troops heading over to Afghanistan. Um, you know, it breaks my heart. Uh, I'm not a political person, so do not take this the wrong way in the little bit that I know. But, you know, as you, as you know, my husband served in Desert Storm, which was in Iraq and Kuwait, um, which is, you know, different than this. I heard a lot of stories. Um, but for instance, um, our little Ryan Clark, uh, not little, he was growing up, but to me, he's my little, he was my little buddy, but he lost his life in Afghanistan quite a few years ago. And, um, they had made such, you know, headway back in the day. Um, and now it seems like we're back to score one. And like I, like I said, I'm not political, um, but, uh, oh, Lord, please, please watch over our troops. Please watch over that country and lead them the right direction. Um, death is just, death and control is, is just not the answers here. So, yeah, so anyway, um, we'll lead into our, our uh, acts of kindness here. Sandy Dravisky also shared an act of kindness with me, and praise the Lord, um, a family, a local family, it sounds like, agreed to um, help her out and drive Mark to Grand Forks for his treatments. And you guys, you know, that's a, that's a good hour and a half, you know, um, and she appreciates it so much because Sandy also works. Um, but that's what we do around here. Um, I just uh, know a handful of people that don't take a second thought at driving someone all the way to Grand Forks to get them the medical care that they need. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's that's a big, big act of kindness there. Um, I have some personal acts of kindness because I haven't really gotten any others so that I'm going to share. A big thank you goes out to Patty for watching our puppies when we were gone and taking such good care of them. Um, 
uh, of course, Darren and I stopped at a few antique stores and, and we ran into um, a gal. I can't remember her name, but the world is so small. She was originally, it was uh, right by, um, uh, I can't think of the, the name of that town. And I wanted to tell you, it's Boy, Minnesota, towns that start with B. Let's see if I can find it. Um, it was up on Highway 2, and um, B-O... Bovey. That's what it's called. B-O-V-E-Y. Hey, good morning, Dean. Um, we stopped at this antique store in Bovey, and it's on Highway 2 up north. And um, long story short, the lady there was actually born in Langdon, which is just 13 miles from here. And um, we found a couple neat things. And she really gave us good deals on it, gave us a free pop to go. And and I just want to put a great big thank you out to, um, to both the ladies that were working there. It was really, really um, a pleasant experience. Uh, big thank you goes out to my dad and my um, stepmom. Um, we visited with them, spent one night there. They took us out for supper. They took us for a boat ride on the beautiful lake they're on. They're on uh, Murphy Lake by Eveleth. And um, Diane made an amazing pasta, chicken pasta salad for us. And she's out, she's like the best host that there, hostess that there is. So thank you guys. And it was awesome to spend that short little bit of time with you guys. Um, as I mentioned, that hotel we stayed in, um, and you can probably imagine it was pretty, pretty spendy, but the hotel, hotel gal that checked us in when we called for the reservation, she went above and beyond because normally they have a two night stay and we didn't have that time and we didn't have that money. And so, um, she gave us a great deal. She made the exception to let us stay one night, gave us a great price and was super down to earth. And you know what? We just appreciate little stuff like that. Good morning, Melora and Tamara. Great to see you guys on. We're just going through our acts of kindness and prayers and just wrap those up. So with that, um, let us all pray. Dear Lord, please fill us with your spirit, peace, love, and joy. Help us to love others as, as you have loved us. Help us to be patient, kind, compassionate, and not easily angered or offended. May we show the same grace and mercy to others that you show us. Please give us wisdom to know when to speak and when to remain silent when dealing with difficult people and situations. May we glorify you in all that we think, say, and do. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Well, that pretty much covers it, huh, guys? I like that one. Keep that one in your back pocket. So, um, I can't remember what, what, where I told you we were going to go, but I decided to skip over um, Mary, which was Martha's sister, because we kind of went through her, with, you know, when we talked about Martha. And, uh, you know, Mary was the one that, you know, took time and, you know, washed Jesus' feet and gave him her time and attention. And then Martha was mad because Mary wasn't helping her in the kitchen and, you know, getting his guest room set up and all that. Um, and Mary was just um, simply a, a woman that um, spent her life in worship. Um, and so there wasn't much there. And then I skipped over Mary of Magdalene because we've done her before. Um, she ended up being a very good friend of, of Jesus, um, a woman with a deceptive past. They even called her, a, you know, prostitute. Um, but we've went through her before. And so today we are going to visit. Can you tell how much I missed you guys? I just am so comfortable being back with you. Talk, talk, talk. Today we are going to talk about the woman um, at the well. Um, and we've never really visited this. I think a lot of you guys are, are familiar with this story. But the story of the woman in the well is a rich example of love, truth, redemption, and acceptance. And best of all, not only does Jesus accept her, which we'll talk about, um, but he accepts all of us too, no matter what. And he wants us all 
in his holy kingdom if only we too believe okay so this woman at the well um we've we've never heard her name she's just the woman at the well but yet her encounter with Jesus is the longest between the Messiah and any other individual in the Gospel of John. This woman represented the lowest of the low, a female in the society where women are both demeaned and disregarded. And she was of a race um, traditionally despised by Jews, and Jesus was a Jew. And she was living in shame as a social outcast. But she not only has a holy encounter with Christ, but also receives eternal salvation. And her testimony convinces an entire town to believe as well. Now, the story of the woman at the well is one of the most iconic encounters in the Bible. Um, this is told mostly in John 4, verses 1 through 42. And it depicts how Jesus traveling through Samaria on the way to Galilee, sat down at a well in the town of Sychar. And that's S-Y-C-H-A-R. And then around noon, while his disciples were in town buying food, he encountered a Samaritan woman coming to draw water from the well. And he asked her for a drink. And then their talk took off from there, ending the conversation with her salvation to where she was so excited, she ran off and told everyone else in the town that she had found the Messiah. So now we aren't told a whole lot about this woman, um, except that we know obviously she was a female and a Samaritan, which was a race with whom Jews did not associate with at the time. Um, we also know that she had five husbands and the man she was currently with was not her husband. We also know from understanding culture and his, historical traditions of time, um, that woman, tip, er, we understand that women, women typically drew their water in groups in the morning when the sun was low and it wasn't so hot. And it was awful, uh, also kind of a social occasion for all the women, kind of like having coffee in the morning. Um, and the fact that this woman at the well that we're talking about today was drawing water alone at midday when the sun is at its hottest probably indicated that she was a social outcast, with, you know, five husbands and a boyfriend, um, and really wouldn't have fit in with the other women earlier in the day. Uh, we also know that she was deeply curious. Um, she felt comfortable enough to not only talk to Jesus, but also kind of drill him with a lot of questions. And his answers to those questions um, and their consequent conversation reveals a great deal more, adding even more significance to this story of the woman at the well. Now her questions, her tone of voice, facial expressions, and other characterizations appear very blunt and direct to Jesus. She asked Jesus a series of questions when he requested a drink of water. How can you ask me for a drink? Okay, because she was a Samaritan and Jews don't associate with Samaritans and Jesus was a Jew. So she's like, really? You're asking me? And then where can you get this living water? Because when Jesus came, yes, he wanted a drink, but then he went in um, to explain that he had living water for her that would um, offer her eternal life. And then she asked, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? So Jesus' responses were just as blunt and direct as her questions, and quite astonishing. In short, Jesus told her not only who he was, the Son of God, the Messiah, but that he had come to offer living water, the kind that will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
Now, what is notable is the way all of this is revealed and the way she appeared to see through his parables, his stories, and glimpse the truth behind his words when so many others, including Jewish experts and scholars, could not. After Jesus asked for a drink, the woman at the well asked how Jesus could ask this of her as she was a Samaritan and Jesus was clearly a Jew. And he replied, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She pointed out that Jesus had no cup. And then asked about this so-called living water as well as as if he was greater than Jacob. Well, the text does not reveal really whether her tone was sarcastic, rhetorical, or fully sincere. Many scholars suspect she was probably being facetious. Hmm. After all, Jacob was the grandson of Abraham, the son of Isaac, and the traditional ancestor of the people of Israel, who likely founded the town in addition to providing the well where they were speaking at. Jacob's notoriety at the time was great. It was everything. But Jesus's clear, earnest answers elaborated on this living water that he, could, that he only could provide. And this interested her and prompted her to ask him for it. And that's what he wanted. He wanted her to ask him for that living water. That's when Jesus shifted to the next phase of their conversation, which reveals that not only did he have what she needed and wanted, but he knew things about her that were both surprising and telling. The fact that she had been married five times and was not married to her current man. Now, assuming Jesus was a prophet, she then began to speak on religious matters, specifically noting that Jews believe the place they must worship is Jerusalem. So in verse 20, we find, Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. Wow, that's in verse 21 through 24. Then Jesus declared that, what he hadn't made public to many yet. He is the Messiah. He told her, I am the Messiah. And he didn't go around screaming that out of the mountain. Other people actually uh, witnessed that he was the Messiah and then would go out and uh, be testimonials for that. So right at that time, his friends returned and the woman ran off. The woman of the well ran off, leaving her water jar behind and, and proclaiming and yelling as she ran off, come see, come see. And she was telling everybody that she met the Messiah. So after Jesus talked to the woman then at the well, she appeared to have been astounded at how Jesus knew the, the, those truths about her, about her husband and her boyfriend. Um, and then as she told, as she ran off and told um, the other Samaritans to come see and, and she told them, he told me everything I ever did. The man didn't even know me. I've never had a conversation with him. And he knew me. So the people then that she ran off and told were intrigued. And so they approached Jesus and he stayed in their town two days talking and preaching with them. And because of what Jesus shared with them, we hear that many more became believers. Her testimony, when she ran off and told everybody, led to many folks' salvation. 
Now, this story I have found um, is significant for a lot of reasons, but five main reasons. First, it shows Jesus' love of the world. Not just one town, not just one kind of person, the world. And the fact that that woman at the well was such a low-standing woman with her gender, race, marital status, Jesus still talked so directly, almost at an equal with her. That shows that Jesus' heart for all, is for all people, not just for some. And just as we see in other stories, all are welcome in the kingdom of God. Secondly, this story reminds us that only Jesus can offer salvation. Jesus offers living water, eternal life. And this water is not like the water we take out of the faucet, but rather comes from God Almighty and lasts forever. Third, it shows the importance of offering our testimony for telling others around us about God. When the woman believed, she immediately ran off to tell others. Her words made an impact. As the scripture tells us, many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. How about us, guys? We believe, right? Let us tell others our testimony of Christ. Fourth, it emphasizes how Jesus is the Messiah. He says, he says it. He says, I am the Messiah. And the woman and the townspeople believed him. As the Samaritans told the woman at the end of the story, we know that this man really is the savior of the world. And then fifth, last but not least, it reveals yet again how Jesus himself was rejected by his own people, just like that woman at the well. So he had done that, been there. And the fact that the woman was a Samaritan and believed is probably the major point in this story. The story of the woman at the well is a rich example of love, truth, reject, er, redemption, and acceptance. And best of all, not only does Jesus accept her, but he accepts all of us too. Just like we say in the beginning, each and every day we are God's child and he loves us. And each and every day is a new start. And best of all, not only does, did Jesus just accept this woman at the well, but he accepts all of us. He wants us all in his holy kingdom. And all we have to do, my friends, is believe. Amen. Amen. The woman, let's all be that woman at the well. We all, we all kind of are. We all have a past. And Jesus loves us because of our past. And he loves us for who we are. Let's don't reflect um, on things we, we can't change from the past. We should wake up every morning, just lay in bed for a minute, and just think, today is a new start. Nothing from a minute before this matters. I'm waking up in God's world, and God loves me. What more could I ask for? Don't live on what a shoulda couldas. Live in the present, the new start of every day, and just feel that love of Jesus, because that is what is going to keep you moving forward. There's nothing better than that, my friends. There's nothing better to feel that love of Jesus and his arms wrapped around each one of us. Nothing in our past matters. Start today. Be a disciple. Share the word of the Lord with others. I don't expect you to get on the corner of the street and, and be a holy roller, as some people call them. 
but share what you know. Share the peace that you felt from God, the blessings that you felt from God. That is one thing you can reflect upon is his blessings. So with that, let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm feeling good today. I'm feeling good today, you guys. Jesus loves me. It's a new start. I hope you're feeling as good as I am. Can I get an amen? Amen and praise the Lord. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto all of you. May the Lord look upon each and every one of you with his favor and give you all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, my friends, is a gift from God. That is why they call today the present. Make the most of this beautiful day because this is the day that the Lord has made <clears throat> and let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Oh, man. Yes, I'm feeling good. Let me get my book and tell you who we'll be talking about on Friday. And we are almost done with this, you guys. Um, I can't believe we've gone through the whole thing. Um, so on Friday, we're going to do the woman of Canaan. The Power of a Mother's Plea, and that is, <clears throat> it comes from Matthew 15, verses 22 through 28, if you guys would like to brush up on that a little ahead of time. And then with that, we only have... At the most, seven left. And that is out of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 and I think I'm going to take a peek of that and form something um, interesting. Um, it's getting through the Bible in a year, but it's, um, it's biographies, kind of like what we've done with these women and some of the men. Um, and then there's go-to places and stories. And I think it'll be really, really interesting. So um, I think I'm going to um, use that for the next resource. So anyway... I could talk to you guys all day because I miss you. Hey, good morning, Patty, Luann, and, and Sandy. Thanks, you guys, for listening. So we, we will see you at fri on Friday. And until then, God bless you, and bye for now.